Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions and today I'm doing a very fun video that is a little bit specific and not really a recommendations video it's a favorites video and I feel like I've not done one of these in a while the last one might have been my favorite tv shows <laughs> video correct me if I'm wrong but today I will be doing as you saw in the title the video some of my all-time favorite characters now a couple disclaimers beforehand. I have so many favorite fictional characters that I that I would probably have to make like a 10 day video, but that is not going to happen. So I cut it down to 10 characters that came to mind when I looked at my bookshelves as my favorite characters of all time, who I would literally be a lawyer for if they ever did anything. And yeah. Anyway, my all-time favorites, so I will just talk about them a little bit, why I like them, no spoilers, so you don't have to worry, and I will elaborate, because some of these characters are a little bit more complicated in regards to the work that they come in. So I think that is enough talking, and let's just get into the video, because intros are not my forte, as you can obviously see. My number one is my... <laughs> all-time book favorite character and he's been my all-time book favorite character for what seven years now six maybe maybe six maybe shorter but i feel like it's six years and that would be maven <laughs> from the red queen series which i very publicly hate on <laughs> all the time and I think it's because he's my favorite character of all time that I hate on it that much. <laughs> but I picked up book three to hold up because it's by far my favorite in the series in terms of his involvement. Now, for a bit of background, I read Red Queen. It was the first book that really got me back into reading. I hadn't read anything for like three years. I thought I was out and like done with reading. Nothing appealed to me. Then I went to a book fair, found randomly book one of Red Queen, and read it in an evening, fell in love with him, and devoured the series. That's where it started. That's where I got back into reading. <laughs> now, I used to tolerate the series when I was much younger. To be fair, I think I read it for the first time when I was like 15 or 14? 15? Okay, then five years, not seven. I can't do math right now, apparently. 2020 is a myth. But <laughs> I tolerated the series, but as I grew older, the more I hated the series as a whole. And after the last book, and I already mentioned that in another video, I never finished the last book to this day. <laughs> I got book four in the mail, sat down, read it in one sitting. The one I got like, what, 10, 20 pages from the ending, a certain thing happened. I closed it and I never opened it again. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I never opened it again. I never finished it. I had to ask someone who had finished it what actually happens in the end. But no matter my hate, and regardless of my hate of this series, and I would never recommend it, he remains my all-time favorite character. And now I've been rambling on the history because I feel like it's kind of necessary for you to know. Now, as to why I like him, I relate to him a little too much, I think. Especially when I was younger and bullied because I just love his personality type. And how he handles certain things is very relatable and I adored his personality in spite of that and how terribly he was brought up. I had to cut off the last clip because I said a spoiler. <laughs> but frankly, if you haven't read this series, you're probably not going to. But let's be polite anyway. I can't go into him too much without spoiling something. So I would just say that he is the only character ever who I have written self-insert fan fiction for because I was so pissed off by how 
what happened to him in this series that literally 16 year old me just sat down put myself into the world and I've been writing it ever since as a comfort hobby I'm pretty sure I have hundreds upon hundreds of pages of myself and him in this world <laughs> so yes he is he has always been my number one and I think he always will be it's just very I will never get rid of the books because I want to always have access to his scenes but and I as evidence this book is the spine is literally so abused because I used to just open this all of the goddamn time to read his scenes and his lines I was obsessed with this book before book four came out I was worshiping the first half of this book and reading it all of the time I'm not even kidding so yes without talking too much because it's difficult to talk about him without spoilers he will forever be my number one is it the nostalgia maybe because he was my first but I love him so much and I will actually get into debates if you disagree with me I have been known to do that in the past next one will likely be the only case in this video where it is two people from one series and I I had to I, I absolutely had to and that would be Rand and Nynaeve from The Wheel of Time. I pick up a different book every time just to keep it interesting. Rand Althor and Nynaeve Almira are by far my favorite characters who stick with me after I've read it. Every time after I read a book, they stick with me. There is a long, long, long list of characters I love in The Wheel of Time, but I try to narrow it down to like the main characters who get the most screen time. Like for example, Moraine would by far be on the list. So would Varen and Swan and <laughs> Perrin, Matt, everyone would be on the list. But I try to narrow it down to those that I am like absolutely every time they are in the picture, I stand. So we had to go with Rand and Nynaeve. Rand is possibly my favorite main character ever because the nuance of his character is subtle, but everyone else can see it but him. And the way that Jordan did the madness aspect of it, chef's kiss, his conclusion is <laughs> extremely satisfying and beautiful and controversial I would say because I know that a lot of people don't like Rand and you are plain wrong but as a main character he is engaging and there is not a single chapter with Rand that was boring in this series for me at least like not a single one even in the slog book like this <laughs> every time Rand shows up I am excited that he's there and I cannot wait to read about him as for Nynaeve she is my favorite female character because I relate to her she is very stubborn and pig-headed. There's a reason for that. But her personality just doesn't take any bullshit at all. She doesn't allow anyone to really step on her. She's embarrassed when she cries, but she actually does cry in private, which I can relate to. I cry a lot, but I would rather die than cry in front of a group of people. She's also very emotional, very protective. When she's jealous, she's very, very aware of it. <laughs> She's the best at magic, but she doesn't look at it like that. I love her. I love her so much. And this, I just realized, is very hard to do without too many spoilers. <laughs> because when you're talking about characters, it's difficult to describe why you like them without mentioning specific situations. But yes, d the two of them own this series, among others. But every time that they are either together, their dynamic is something I really love too. When they're either together or doing magic everyone else can just leave because nothing can beat that absolutely nothing can be beat that and in 14 books they never wavered in who they were and that's why I loved them they were always those people that I loved they didn't become obnoxious bastards or something so Rand and Nynaeve Next one is a no-brainer, but I am gonna still say it because she's my favorite female main character ever. And that would be Vasya, Vas Vasilisa Petrovna. 
I think is her full name, if I remember correctly. My mind is so full of content since I've not been at uni. So Vasya, she is the best female character that I've ever come across alongside another one on this list because they have very similar vibes. Settings where women are not allowed to really be who they want to be are very hard to do because the protagonists oftentimes come out as being overly annoying or aggressive in a way and just not really likable almost in a way where you feel like the author wants to show how that's not acceptable in that society but Vasi is quite the opposite. She is a character who is in a historical setting where she's not allowed to be anything but a mother and she doesn't angrily rebel against it. She's almost calm in a way that's like, I am the way I am and you're allowed to be the way that you are. It's just not for me. And I loved her so much that I actually could digest all of the sexism, which usually really bothers me. And that's sometimes due to the main character just being a plot device for the sexism to be poured onto. She has a life of her own, even though she's not supposed to. And she is so involved in magic and fairy tales and the wonders of here, the Russian North and what that entails and how it weaves into the magical world that the whole society thing is secondary and she always has somewhere to escape to even at her worst and she is my favorite main character ever because the way she reacts to cer in certain situations and responds to certain people is way more normal and just relaxed and at peace than so many teenager girl protagonists who are just trying to be quirky and loud and rebellious which frankly I have had enough of because I think silent resistance is sometimes even more powerful and I love her so much for it. She will forever be my favorite female protagonist because there's a lot of male protagonists that I love because let's be honest men mostly <laughs> are better at writing male protagonists but Catherine Arden created the perfect girl that just isn't, in the best way, isn't like all the other main character girls in YA. I mean that in the best way here. I could have picked up a different book for this one, but because he's on the cover, I just don't want to get another one with some of the other characters. And that would be Geralt, <laughs> or Geralt of Ravia from The Witcher. Everyone from the main squad could be my favorite even though a lot of them show up later in the series like all of them all of them could be my favorite character but since Geralt and essentially Dandelion are the only ones who are appearing throughout I will have to say Geralt <laughs> because his personality is a little bit not shocking just very different than the other personalities in this world because you would expect him to be very negative and bitter which he is but not in a bad way he's very funny and sarcastic and dry but again like the last one at peace with it he is sort of at peace with the world he's not just running around kicking into things and being angry about his position He's handling it with actual grace and dignity and everyone should strive to be like him in this world, honestly. Every situation that he is in, he never gets stupid angry for no reason at all because he can assess the situation and change his methods if the situation requires it. Like in the case in this one, when he meets a random monster, he doesn't treat it as you would imagine he would every other monster. He actually talks to it. These aren't really major spoilers. These are all short stories that didn't tell you what happened, but... And the way that he treats the other characters so kindly, even when they're annoying him, he usually calls them out, but he still lets them vent and he always listens to them. The best example of that is Andillion, who is his really good friend, even though 
he really annoys Geralt a lot of the time, but they are still really, really good friends. Of course, Geralt's relationship with Ciri, Geralt's relationship with Yennefer, which I thought I would hate, but how Sikowski did it is actually pretty great. His relationship with everyone he comes across, honestly, is what sells me on him. Because if I was in this universe, which gets pretty bleak later on, it's not like a daisies and rainbows universe, I would want to be friends with Geralt. <laughs> I would actually want to be friends with Geralt and just go everywhere with him. So he by far deserves this spot the most, although everyone from the group could definitely count. This is going to be a bit of a cheat, but I didn't want to put any manga in this because I don't... Not that I don't consider manga books, they are definitely books and it's reading, just like graphic novels. But I don't really consider books something that is extremely long, the way manga are, like a lot of them. Honestly, of all the manga that I've read, only one <laughs> has actually been completed in a timely manner. All the other ones have been ongoing for like a decade or over a decade, so I don't really consider that books. It's not like one whole, it's many, 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 many arcs, and oftentimes it's very drawn out. So, I used <laughs> the only one who I, which I consider a book, and that's Death Note. <laughs> because this is it, like, this is it. No nothing else to it, this is all that we have of Death Note, so I can consider it just a very, very thick book, and it is very, very heavy. But <laughs> in terms of Death Note, Light. I just want to highlight Light Yagami <laughs> as my favorite character because I have also loved him for many many years. He was the first character who I loved from an the anime manga world bef years before I got into it like I did this year and he will always <laughs> be one of my favorite characters in fiction in general so I knew I had to put him in here. I always describe Death Note as Moriarty and Sherlock from Moriarty's perspective because with Moriarty and Sherlock what's interesting about their dynamic is that their intellect is equal and it's not always really clear who's right it's not really black and white because they both it's sort of like yin and yang which is what I love about it because both of them are wrong and right for different reasons and in different situations and their dynamic is everything to me, but we're not talking about Elle and Light, although Elle is extremely close to Light in my heart. But we're talking about Light today. I love him as a character because, <laughs> firstly because of his voice actor, but we're talking about the book here. I love his intellect and how he displays it, and the slow transition of his character throughout the story is something that I really, really loved watching as it progressed. And him in general as a person, where you're not sure if he's emotional or not, or if he would react a certain way or not, if if he has to make a decision, he usually wouldn't want to if he's making it for emotional reasons, or he's actually just thinking about it. And he is a fascinating character that I will always love a little bit more than Elle, a little bit more than Elle, because, and I agree with the authors in this regard, you can disagree, but keep in mind that Elle is like a close second in character love but the author said that if Light didn't become what he became he would be the best detective policeman in the world and that he as is actually superior to Elle and I agree and that's all I will say on that without going into spoilers but I think some of the best crafted characters are actually in Death Note and Light's character development is up there with Rand in my opinion because they have a very similar arc only Light's ends a little bit more <laughs> a little bit more differently in a way that hurts a little but a little differently and I loved it every every bit of it next one is easy and I don't really need to explain it it's Anne and from Anne of Green Gables. She is the icon and she is the moment. She is the blueprint for character archetypes that I have always loved. Because this is like very light cottage core, it's very lighthearted. She is a character who is actually riddled with 
her personality is riddled with tragedy and heartbreak and a lot of childhood trauma and pain but she still has somehow manages to be this absolute firecracker sunshine of a person that every time she shows up you're not sure whether you want to burst into laughter or tell her to shut up and often it's both and i think she would be very interesting to have as a friend because her extroversion is something that would annoy me greatly but i also would love her freedom and just her vivacious spirit and her happiness in spite of everything that's happened and always being dramatic whether that's positive or negative her absolute imagination and how she can see magical things in the most ordinary things such as tree branches i just love her my entire heart is full in every rendition of anne's character and you can tell that lucy was Anne when she was younger because she just pours her entire soul into crafting this character and she is someone who I wouldn't say I relate to so much as I love her because we are very different but the things that are key aspects of her character I think are also key aspects of my personality and I just find it beautiful she sometimes just says these random things that you can't believe or even written when it was written she says it and it sounds like it could be applicable to daily life <laughs> in 2021 i my heart just swells every time that i talk about Anne, and in all of the shows and all of the books her soul just shines like bright sunshine the last one can be a bit odd especially because i talked about that book in negative and positive ways last year but it would be Jed or Sparrowhawk from Earthsea not talking about Tehanu Jed that that doesn't exist <laughs> but the first trilogy Jed or Ged I still haven't figured out really how to say that one <laughs> but he's a wizard in a world that shocked me by how non-violent it is i thought there would be like a war brewing somewhere or at least like an issue to solve or something but jed is a character whose biggest issues are himself or his own personal demons for example in book one you would think the conflict would be something large scale but it's his quest to defeat something which is only related to him and I loved that because it was very, very rare to see in fantasy, honestly. It's always war. I mean, I love Ursula's world in general, and I can't wait to get back into it. But Jed's character stuck with me. He's the one character who is obviously in all the books as he ages. Even though the other protagonists are young and new, he is in every story. And he learned a lot from when he was young and you can tell why he is wise or why he is the way that he is later on it's not just random like oh he's wise now you can tell why it happened and he makes mistakes he is not perfect he skirts the edge between like pure white character and maybe a little gray but i love him <laughs> way too much way 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 too much and he also has that very easy sense of humor where he's not trying that hard and he is caring in certain situations and offers comfort even if it's the truth which isn't that comforting to hear i my memory might be a little bit hazy of this because i read it a while ago but i do remember loving him and him sticking with me i think the scene that i teared up to was about his personal development so if you haven't read Earthsea, I recommend the first trilogy. <laughs> the next one should be a little obvious because I talk about it enough. But I will just try and find an image. <laughs> and that would be V from V for Vendetta. V, <laughs> obviously there are many characters here and the real main character is E. But in this world, V's character, <laughs> you know what that means if I if you've read it is so inspiring and it kicks you where it's important <laughs> you can't help but not love him 
what he stands for, what he represents, what he's fighting for, how he's going about it, and how he isn't ruthless at all, but methodical in what he is doing, truly shines through Moore's writing and David Lloyd's drawings, especially because the man is freaking insane. But V is the star of the show, even if Evie Hammond is the main character. And if you've watched the movie, they changed the entirety of V's personality and motivations for why he does what he does. And I absolutely detested that in the movie. So we're only talking about this V. And I love what he says and how he says it. And I think the speech that he makes, the entire world could benefit from actually hearing a speech like that in real, in real life. So that is all I have to say about him. Again, the last one is no shocker, but I feel like he's at the bottom of the list because his character flip-flops so much, but that doesn't change the fact that I love him. Like, doesn't change it even a little bit. I tried to find it. There. <laughs> I will just hold it up like this. But the icon, the one and only, the Starless Saint or the Darkling from <laughs> the Grisha trilogy. He was my favorite character since I read it because back when I read it, I was still obsessed with Maven and I felt that he was better handled than Maven. I con Again, controversial opinion. I can't believe I have to repeat myself this much, but Ruin and Rising is my favorite book and his particular story in Ruin and Rising is by far my favorite, along with the prequel, which breaks me apart every time. But his story and conclusion is brilliant in my opinion for who he was and I think she handled his ending beautifully and who he is in the story is again flip floppy a little bit because you can tell it's her first series so sometimes he's this character other times he behaves a little bit differently but for most of the time who he is I adore him for his basically for his duality because he is a person who knows what they're doing but almost subconsciously is a bit upset that they want to do it. And I think every time I've read Ruin and Rising, I've cried, which explains a lot. And he will always remain my favorite character in this series, even though I do like a lot of the others. But just no one really compares to his level of depth. <laughs> I love Alina in the books almost as much as him. I'm now thinking of the show, which ruined the whole perspective for me. But no one comes close to his no matter what you say because Lee was new at writing but he is extremely nuanced and not that simple and really deserves pity <laughs> really really deserves pity and me as someone who loves him i absolutely think the ending was just right so the darkling i would say his name but that's a spoiler, unlike what the show thinks about it. But that is actually a spoiler because it's important to his character arc. But let's just, let's just ignore that. Anyway, this art is beautiful, by the way. That wraps up this video, and I hope it was at least somewhat enjoyable. If you know any of these characters, <laughs> let me know what your opinion is on them. But considering that these are my favorites... If you have anything negative to say, form it in a way that isn't just, you, you know, one of those com comments where it's like, oh, no, I don't get it. I absolutely hate him. At least articulate because then I can actually have a discussion with you and defend them. But anyway, let me know what you thought and let me know what your top 10 favorite book characters are. I really want to know what, is there like a similar, similar thread when you list your favorite characters so you can kind of see what you actually like. You can <laughs> definitely see a thread with mine. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was fun and not too, not too chaotic because I am doing my best to make it less chaotic. But I will see you in the next video.